Police say the gunman took his own life after that shooting, and even though he is dead, the investigation really just beginning. For some added perspective, we want to thank Daniel Roberts for joining us here this afternoon. He's currently Franklin Police Chief, but also former special agent in charge of the Detroit FBI. Thank you so much for joining us and just adding some all important insight to sure. this. Happy to be here. All right, so we want to get straight to it. Uh, obviously, we know that the FBI is involved with this investigation. Where do you see it going from here? It's going to be a while. It's going to take a long time. There's so many moving parts and pieces. The part that takes the longest would be the deep dive that they're going to be doing into the suspect's social media, all of his social media accounts. I would imagine that the Bureau is heavy, heavily involved in that, as well as potentially looking at his cell phone and tracking that, going back to see where he was for the last few hours and even the last few days before this, this shooting happened. Um, and tracking all of that just takes time. It takes search warrants. It takes all kinds of, of computer work and, and analysis. You mentioned his social media, and I want to get to social media in a broader sense. Uh, such a tool for reliable sources to get out information. Uh, we saw, for instance, I believe it was MSU Police and Public Safety did an incredible job last right. night on Twitter, keeping people informed. Uh, but so much false information, so much speculation from others. At one point, we were hearing there were three shooters. At another point, you had somebody posting a specific photo and name of someone who we now know is not the confirmed gunman. How damaging is social media from your perspective? It, it, re it takes up a lot of resources of the law enforcement and the first responders because they have to run down all of those leads, uh, even though they, they may sound ca crazy at the time. I would just say for the general public out there, uh, Pay attention to what law enforcement is telling you and, not, and nobody else on, when one of these crises happens. And that way you'll have the best information available. Um, and I know early on MSU police put out their warning, run, hide, fight, and I, that probably saved lives by, by reinforcing that particular course of action. And that's great. And we, uh, we appreciate the work that the MSU PD as well as all of the regional police did there. They did a phenomenal job in responding to that. Actually, that leads me to my next question. Really, you can only imagine how critically you have to think in a moment like that when everything is happening right. in real time like that. Uh, what is your thought right now on how they've been able to react and handle this and move so quickly? Yeah, you know, training on this, I've been in law enforcement a long time, and training on these types of things have evolved over the years. And now departments are much more willing to work together on when they have a crisis like this. That's why you saw the massive police response that you saw from virtually every law enforcement agency in the state probably was tuned into it and would have responded if necessary. All of the federal agencies, FBI, ATF, they were on site last night. So uh, law enforcement, when we have these unfortunate shootings, they've grown and they've learned from past things and they, and they know that we have, to re we have to quickly respond with a sh big show of force. And that's what happened last night. Staying on law enforcement, given the size of campus, a monumental task for those officers last night. Right. And this is all coming at a time that we are consistently reporting on how difficult recruitment is, how difficult retainment is. Can you speak to the importance of being fully staffed when you have incidents <laughs> like this? I mean, there's something going on with the culture right now as well. There is. It, it's an interesting time in law enforcement, and you hit on it. I think that's probably the largest challenge that lo we in law enforcement have right now is retaining our good people and hiring new people. I mean, I, I looked at the Atlanta Police Department this morning. They put out an article. They're 450 officers mm -hmm. short in the city of Atlanta. That's just unbelievable. And that's yeah. probably almost a quarter of their department. Um, and that's not unique to the, just Atlanta. Every, every department in this area is hiring officers, and we're always looking for qualified people. And, and it's a definitely you know, a shift in the pendulum from certainly when I started in law enforcement decades ago, where finding a law enforcement job was very desirable, and you tested against a number of people trying to get one position. Now you can post a number of positions, and you hope to get one applicant or one good applicant for that. So it's. It's changed, and we hope we can draw people back uh, into the. It's a it's a great profession. It is, you know, it's not perfect like any other, but it certainly is a great profession. We hope we can draw people back into it. Yeah, and unfortunately, this is something that we see far too often in this country. Of course, we know that schools and businesses prepare as best they can. Really, right. you can't prepare for something like this. What do you think goes through the minds of those law enforcers while they're trying to make sure everyone's safe and just 
find the shooter and keep everything under control. That's it. It's find the bad guy and stop him from doing what he's doing. It used to be that you waited outside. You know, when I started, the training was you, you wait outside, you try to negotiate it out. Now it's you run to where you think the bad guy is and stop him from doing what he's doing. Um, and that's the mindset all of the police are being trained on today is you have to run in and do what you can to stop that bad activity right away. Yeah, times have definitely changed. Yeah. No all right. Thank Dan you so Roberts, much. Dan Roberts, thank you again. So much added perspective and insight. Very helpful. We Good appreciate to be with it. you.